Uh, hello everyone, can you hear me? Think. Okay, just a minute. Okay, I think we are live. Uh, can anybody, can everyone see my screen now? And hear my voice properly? Just to check. Okay, the I think we are live. Uh, can anybody, equipment can everyone see my screen now? If you can hear my voice clearly and, and hear my uh, voice properly, like no lagging between the image and my just sound. Just check. Okay, I think we are live. Uh, uh, can anybody equip? Can everyone see my screen now? If you can hear my voice clearly and hear my voice properly, like no lagging. Yes, yes. Between the image and there's really like no lagging. Okay, I think we are live. Between my and can everyone see my screen now? If you can hear my voice clearly and hear my voice properly, like no lagging. Yes, yes. Between the image and there's really like no lagging. Okay, I think we are live. Between my and can everyone see my screen now? If you can hear my voice clearly and hear my voice properly, like no lagging yes yes between and the image there's and my like no lagging okay i think like you're live uh, uh, between my and maybe okay any uh, echo is there an echo now i suppose that should fix it let me check okay any echo is there an echo now Is it fine now? Is it fine now? Uh, the echo. Slightly better. Yeah, probably it should be better Is very soon. Now? I'm not Is sure. Let me see. Uh, Mike. Yeah, probably it should be better. Better now? I'm not sure. Let me see. Okay, all, all clear, right? Everyone can hear me properly? Okay, cool. So, uh, welcome you all to my first uh, official live um, YouTube uh, um, stream. So, still echoing. That's weird. Welcome you all to my first official live I try to actually block out all this. So, Echo. It's fixed now. Uh, if you still hear the echo, maybe you try joining it again because I just mute all the uh, the background noise from the OBS, so probably it might now. be. Uh, if you still hear the echo, you... maybe you try joining it again because I just mute all the uh, background noise from the OBS. After four sec. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> now a single sound is coming uh, far away. Uh, Kius said that he 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 is all fixed now. So, is it fixed now, or still is there any problem? Said that he, he, he is all fixed now. Okay, let me see what I can is do it here. Fixed now, or still is there any problem? Um. Okay, let me see what I can do here. Uh, is it okay now? Not sure. It has to be do with the audio and stuff like that. Um. Uh, 
uh, is it okay now not sure it has to be with the audio and stuff like that uh is the sound better is the sound better Do you have any idea why is it so like because I think the setup was the same like last time that I used to test the live stream so last time it was good all good Do you have any idea why um, is it so like because I think the setup was the same like last time that I When you talk we hear it again from far away last time it was good. about 10 seconds I'll try plugging when you talk, we hear it again from far away, about 10 seconds. Is it okay now? I have only one tap opening now. Is it okay now? Okay, just a minute. Maybe if I switch on this. Now, is it fine now? Uh, can you hear my voice now properly? I think it has to with some speaker, uh, multiple speakers t being turned on something. Okay. Kiyu said it's fine. Uh, what about the others? It looks fine now. It was probably the video, so it's fine for me. Okay, Harjot said it's fine. Kiyu's fate is fine. Okay, okay, all good, right? I can start. Okay, I think everyone is fine now. First official stream. I already had like a test run last uh, last week, so uh, maybe you know uh, it might not be perfect. So if there's any problem between, you can let me know. So um, in this live stream, you know, just as the title suggests, I'm gonna kind of go through a bunch of your questions and do a quick side audit for you as well. And uh, okay, so. In, in, in the first phase of this uh, live stream, I kind of go through, you know, a little bit of what's new in SEO, right? Because this, like, the the show is called as SEO live stream, so I think it's uh, um, better for everyone to kind of know what's going on in the industry, so you can kind of keep up to date, right? And we'll and then we'll quickly jump to the questions after this uh, Q and A, all right? So. Uh, this is like where I actually get my news from. Like, uh, you know, if you don't know this site, you better go and, you know, check it out now. It's called scroundtable.com and it's been forever. And it's run by none other than, you know, the SEO veteran here named Barry Schwartz. And, you know, he likes to cover every stuff related to SEO, right? So whenever it comes to, you know, any al algorithm updates or, you know, anything like, any news basically related to SEO, mostly about Google, but he also covers about Bing and Yahoo and, and other stuff as well. So um, I, I will go through a little bit of, you know, quick news, you know, which I think are important, like from last week and also this week. And uh, so starting off with this, you know, today's news, right? This is really interesting. Like, um, interestingly, there's a poll run in, on Twitter and uh, it is on a topic like, is there currently a shortage of SEO talent? 
surprisingly, 53.7% of people say, yes, there's a current shortage of SEO talent. And which, you know, kind of not really a little bit surprising, but also not in a sense that, you know, like we have seen, you know, SEO is such an easy business to get started, right? Like all you have, all you need is basically just a laptop and an internet connection. And then, you know, and you can just basically say you're an SEO expert, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you know, SEO is really hard and you know, it requires a lot of experience, lots of, you know, testing and stuff like that. And, you know, in, in our market today, we have all these kind of, you know, we basically call it, you know, like beginners or maybe, you know, snakes or a salesman, right? But those, these people who kind of sell courses and stuff like that, and they don't really do stuff, you know, all, all those stuff. So uh, a little bit, you know, shocking as well as uh, at the same time, also kind of expected as well. So let me know in the comment what you think and, you know, whether this poll is correct or not. <laughs> so this is the first interesting news which I found. Besides that, um, from the past week or so, there also have been, you know, um, reported of um, algorithm updates. And uh, it, it was started on 26th and 27th and also on 24th and 25th as well, which I, I was able to identify. There was a lot of chatters in the industries. Um, you know, some people was, you know, reported a loss in traffic and, you know, jumping in ranking and stuff like that. So uh, I'm curious to know, like, what, what has the effect been for your website so far? And it seems to be the the uh, the effect from the this um, maybe from the passage indexing, which was launched back on the first week of February. And uh, if you don't know what is passage indexing is basically you know, the new algorithm which Google announced last year in which, you know, they will uh, basically what it does here is they will try to serve, you know, um, more relevant content that users need, right? Um, to basically, you know, try to find the relevant piece of content within the paragraphs and try to serve it as 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 good as they 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 can, right? Stuff like that. And also it might be a little bit, you know, um, related to December core update as well, which happened on the um, third of February, third uh, of December last year as well. Uh, just my opinion though. So, and, uh, you know, let me know what happened to your site around this date. Also, you know, right around 23rd, 24th February as well, there was a lot of uh, chatters in the, um, in the industry as well. So, um, yeah, that's th th these two are basically the two um, big news that I have for you in this week. And obviously, you know, this is also another in interesting one. SEM Raj, you know, uh, many of your favorite um, uh, SEO tools is also going public now, right, in the stock market. So this is also kind of interesting. And, and, you know, surprisingly, they have reported, uh, SEM Rush right now is being reported as the fastest SEO, uh, growing SEO tool in the market right now, surpassing Ahrefs, which is, you know, quite surprising. As you can see, uh, SEM Rush went from third to fourth place in SEO software to clear winner in, you know, in revenue and growth rate. Uh, from the past, I think, five years or so. Ahrefs is coming at second at about 55 to uh, $75 million in revenue. So, you know, any SEM Rush fan here, let me know in the comments. And I know some of you are using SEM Rush, so let me know as well. <clears throat> So yeah, that, th these are the top three news that I have for you this week. And now let's kind of jump right into the questions and answers. So let me type in your question in the comment section in the chat and I'll answer them uh, as, much, as much as I can. Also, if you have a, um, your website that you want me to kind of have a look, quick look at, also just type in the chat as well. Okay, type in your question, guys. <clears throat> Any questions? Let me know in the chat. I'll be in this stream for about uh, around maybe half an hour more or so. Um, it depends on, you know, how many viewers are there and uh, how many questions I get. 
I might decide to leave earlier as well. So let me know in the comments your questions. Just type in. Will you make a new SEO course on Skillshare? No, I will not make any new course now. Uh, those I I only have three courses, and those are my uh for general SEO, not just WordPress. You know, uh, really, to be honest, um, I mostly use WordPress, and I I think that you know many people also use WordPress. That's why I made WordPress SEO course. But really, in the at the end of the day, SEO is a is a you know is a um what do you say is a is the same for all types of website. You know, you just have to understand what what is there, right? Um, the technical part will always be always be different. But the concepts and, you know, how to implement and stuff like that will always be the same regardless of, you know, whatever platform you're using. So let's say Shopify, right? So you you, you learn from my course uh, and then you implement the concept that you've learned. The only thing that you have to kind of, you know, adapt is how to actually, you know, implement them on the on the tech side. So Shopify, they don't have plugins. They have something called as apps, I suppose. So what you do here is, let's say on on uh, WordPress, you have, you know, like something like a Yoast. And what does Yoast do? Yoast put a canonical tag on your heading, right, into a header. And what does what else does Yoast do? It ha it makes, you know, changing your title tag, meta description easier, stuff like that. So at the same uh, at the same thing, you also do on a Shopify, right? So you ha have to find apps which does this for you, or you, you kind of have to go into the code and, you know, modify it by yourself. But uh, as, apart from that, everything else is the same. I've heard that pace bin is going bigger. Um, what is an ideal or acceptable score? Yeah, Mike, definitely. Pace speed. Actually, to be honest, pace speed is more important than any of you ever think about, uh, have ever thought about, really. Because you see, um, the thing here is there's really no uh, fixed numbers of lighthouse or fixed score that you need for your website. But uh, you kind of have to compare with your competitors, basically. In SEO, everything you have to check with your competitors and see, um, you know, let's say page speed, for instance. What is the average page loading time for your competitors? And what you have to, what you got to do here is you try to, you know, bring down as as less as least as you can, basically. Trying to keep, you know, not maybe, you know, let's say if you, the average is about, you know, five seconds then you, you can, you know, easily make that happen, right? Like try to load not more than three seconds, stuff like that. So it all depends on your industries, on your niche, on your keywords. But really, the faster you can do it, the better. Because page speed will not only help with the rankings directly, but it also helps a lot in indirectly as well. When it comes to, you know, conversions, right? When it comes to crawl, crawl rate, make sure, you know, the, the faster your site loads, the better crawl rate you're going to get. Hence, the more, you know, um, more rankings you can basically um, achieve out of it as well. So, you know, invest as much as you can in page speed. It doesn't have to, you know, go like 0.5 seconds or one second, but make sure your time to first byte is, you know, less than one second and your paint score is also less than one second if you can do it. So, uh, and it's always been, you know, a big part in rankings, um, actually. But just you know, not many people realize. Uh, mostly indirectly, actually, because you know, if if your web page takes about let's say five seconds to load, if visitors don't wait, they just will just click quickly, you know, click the bounce uh, the back button, and what 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 that visitor is gonna do here is gonna click click on your competitors, and if the visitor converts on your competitors' website, obviously Google is gonna rank your competitors higher over time. So it, it works indirectly, you know, in a very big way, more than, you know, many of the people actually imagine. But, you know, you don't really have to kind of stress out that a lot as well. So make sure you have good hosting and, you know, make sure your site is optimized. Did Google promote search result present a challenge for SEO? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand <laughs> the question. 
Uh, maybe you can try rephrase that. Uh, have you read the three months to number one 2021 no nonsense SEO playbook? Uh, for getting your website found on Google Book. No, uh, sorry, I haven't read. Actually, I have not read any SEO book. <laughs> uh, most of my knowledge actually came from you know um, watching like YouTube videos. Um, and trying things myself, basically. Uh, the only uh, the only paid course I've ever paid for SEO is a Udemy course, um, the twelve in one digital marketing course by Daryl Walsh. That's the fir- that's my first course that I paid, and my last as well. Uh, maybe in the future I might decide to buy other courses, but uh, right now I think I'm okay with what I know. But uh, but most of, most importantly, you know, is test, test, and test. That's more important. We've talked here about topic. I think that would be a good topic to touch on for people learning SEO. Yeah, yeah, I I do have many. Like, if you look at my videos, I have about ninety six videos in on my channel right now. Roughly about forty percent of all my videos talk about topical topic relevancy. So. Um, you know, I've talked a lot about it. <laughs> so if any of you just watching my show for the first time, you can definitely um, watch uh, many of my YouTube videos. I have also some of the case studies which I was able to achieve using topic relevancy. Uh, some of them are, you know, I've, I have a video on them. So make sure you watch them. I have a lot, like about 40% of all my videos are about this topic. And but yeah, generally it's, it's just about you know making your site um, relevant to the topic you want to rank for. So let's say if your website is about roofing, then you would you know you would generally want to have multiple pages, at least five pages about related to roofing, basically. So let's say you you uh, your website does a roofing service, you want to have pages about the you know, roof inspection service. Um, commercial roofing service, residential roofing service, stuff like that, which are all um, related to what is your main keyword that you want to rank about. This is basically what the concept of topic relevance is all about. How long have you been in the industry? Not really long, really, but but you know, most of actually, I've this is my like um, this April, I'm I'm gonna be you know sec uh, full two years in the industry. I started in 2019. Yeah, I guess yeah, 2019 about on in April or May basically. I don't remember around that time. But uh it's the amount that hours that I spend doing stuff basically. So, you know, I spend like at least 5 to 6 hours every day, you know, trying to learn and trying to do stuff. So, I don't know what is it may be equivalent to people who have been practicing maybe 3 or 4 years, maybe something like that. So, uh, you know, um, yeah, so, but if you count number of years, then, yeah, it's, gonna, all, it's going to be two years. Um, in this whole industry, basically, not just SEO, but, you know, web, web design, stuff like that. And, you know, all these digital marketing uh, uh, space. When I search for Amazon on top, I get Amazon link with Google ad written below it. Then other Amazon's links are shown. Uh, oh yeah, th- that is basically you know the paid ads, right? Like the Google ads, um, and that's because you know Amazon. Uh, so first they showed up in the as an ad with a with an ad label on it because you know they uh, because uh, because they run ads so. Or on Google search results, you have two kind of results. First is the ad. Second is the organics or, you know, the rankings achieved using SEO. So the first section, you know, they might have run ads. That's why they're shown up. And secondly, because, you know, they, their website is really, yeah, you know, ha- like Amazon is a very big website. They have lots of authority behind them. That's why they're ranking um, in the organic section as well. How did you find your first SEO client? Uh, I found my SEO first SEO client by working as a freelancer. So I was offering uh, I I was offering work uh, web web development service on one of the uh, one of the freelance 
platform. And after I completed that project, client also asked for SEO. Um, so yeah, that's how I first found my first client. Through the freelancing platform, basically. Okay, shoot more questions. Um, still about half an hour to go from today from now. If you have any, you know, if you want me to have a look, quick look at your website, just drop in the link. I'll be happy to take a quick look on it. Uh, when you type in the URL, just make sure you don't put, you know, the full URL properly. Just put something like ABC and then space dot com, something like that, because I think the chat uh, filters out the URL, uh, some stuff like that. So ever use LinkedIn or Instagram to connect to client? I used to try, I used to try using social media to get clients, but I, I, I know many people have succeeded with them, but personally, I haven't found any success actually <laughs> used to get actually, you know, like, um, not really a full client, but, uh, I haven't really found any success because, you know, I think one of the reason is because, um, one of the reason is probably because people use social media just for, you know, to kind of relax and, you know, to doze off from their work and stuff like that. Right. So not really not the intent, you know, is different. Basically, people on social media has a different intent than people on other platforms. So uh, for some reason, I'm not I'm not really good at finding clients through social media. How do you count number of hours while working on project in dollars per hour? How do you count number of hours? Um, count number of hours, you know, just just use a clock. I mean, I just check my time. Really, you know, when I charge, uh, um, when I charge, I charge a flat rate. But, you know, in the background, I, I think about, you know, how much time approximately it would take for me to complete that project. And then based on that, I charge a flat rate some stuff like that, except for, you know, for very like specific type of work. Uh, in that case, I might, you know, use some online soft software stuff like that. So like I had a client last couple of months back asked for a, you know, for on page strategies. So that was like about five hours job. Like initially I didn't know how, how much time it would take to complete that job. So first I charged initial three hours and then I charged the remaining after I completed the project. So it, it depends really, but most of the cases I just charge flat rate and then calculate in the background how much it would take for me to complete the job. What are the best industries to target in your experience? Which one to avoid? Uh, I I don't know, but I think I think home service, home improvement, home services, all these are really you know the best one because. Um, their cost per conversion is really high, right? Like let you imagine like one roofing, if you can get one roofers, a client, um, you know, it, it really costs a lot, right? Like one, one roofing client can really, you know, like one project, one roofing project can really cost like up like minimum of $3,000 per project. Right. So, so these, these, these people, people in this industry, you know, will be able to pay a lot when it comes to, you know, marketing for their website stuff like that e-commerce are also good but personally i i haven't jumped to into e-commerce yet um the main reason is because it requires it, it requires a lot of lots of work unless you know it's a very small store small e-commerce uh, store then i will try to you know to take them otherwise i don't really target e-commerce but e-commerce is also another good industry as well are very long pages with many keywords helpful? No, uh, that depends on the the keywords. Um, it doesn't mean that you know writing long or more content will, means it will rank better. This is a a big one of the biggest SEO myths actually. <laughs> Cool, cool. Uh, shoot me questions. I like answering them. Just let me know. 
seems like not many people are actually watching it. No problem. I know they know that uh, the channel is not very big yet, but uh, so you know, less people means you'll definitely get more uh, attention. <laughs> so this is your chance, guys. Ask questions. Howdy, howdy, Carlos. How are you? Just to recap of what's going on, um, here we have a live uh, uh, Q&A section. So, you know, you can ask your questions in the chat. I'll answer them. If you want me to have a look at any website, make sure to drop the link in the description in the chat and I'll take a quick look at it. Is there a source you recommend to find city specific citations? Uh, no, I don't have. Uh, I used to struggle this on this question as well. What I find here is the easiest way is to just Google your competitor's brand name. You will get all the top citations that they have their business listed on. Because I know, you know, many citations, they don't show up on all these SEO tools, right? SEMrush or Ahrefs. So easiest way is just Google your competitor's brand name. You'll get uh, all these, almost all the top citations that they are listed on. Just Google, you know, a couple of them, right? Like take a couple of your competitors' brand name, just Google them. The first three to four pages, those are the top citations that Google thinks are, you know, important. So just take those. Um, you don't really have to list the business on, you know, hundreds of citations. Only a few are, you know, important basically, like Yellow Pages, Yelp, all that. Um, and also see this specific location citation, you also do the same. Other than that, just Google, you know, something like um, Long Island site, uh, business directory, stuff like that as well. That also can be done. Uh, I think there are some tools out there. Uh, people say, I, I think it's local Vikings or stuff like that, that, um, that allows you to find uh, something like this or maybe bright local. I'm not sure, but, you know, I, I don't really kind of. It's not really required, re actually, <laughs> because at the end of the day, those two will kind of also reverse engineer your competitors and see, you know, what where are they listed on as well. So the best way is just use Google. I read like I read that like the top twenty is enough for local citations. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, yep. Yeah, uh, top twenty is just like you know magic number. People say top twenty and stuff, stuff like that. Really. You try to get your business listed on as many as you can that your competitors have. That, and, you know, like yellow pages, all those. How is 2021 going for you? Uh, it's going pretty good. Going pretty good so far. What about you? <laughs> what about you? So ho hopefully everyone can hear my voice clearly and there's no, you know, lagging behind uh, when I speak and when the voice comes out. And hopefully there's no echoing as well. If there's any technical problem, just let me know in the comment. I mean, in the chat, as you know, this is my first official live stream. So, you know, it, it, it won't be perfect. I know that, but eventually in the future, it will be better for sure. And let me know, you know, uh, what 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 else do you want me to do in this live stream, so I will be able to tailor it for you. How was your college? Uh, pretty good. Uh, same, you know, stuff, you know, with COVID and stuff like that. <laughs> Still busy with other things, but trying to get there. Yeah, I know you just started. It will be, it will not be easy, um, but you have to uh, grind. Are you going to do a live audit? 
uh, not really a full live audit, but if you want me to take a quick look at any of your sites, you can just drop in the chat. I can go through, you know, like a quick overview, you know, like 30,000 foot view, and then, you know, maybe point out uh, what, like what maybe you're doing wrong or something like a recommendations that I think you can have. You know, like live audit would will basically take, you know, an hour or something to, to complete, right? So that obviously is not possible here. Uh, but a quick overview, like quick, you know, five, 10 minutes audit on a site, that's, that's definitely. So you can drop in the link. I can take, have a quick look. Also, in the future, you know, all of you can recommend me like what type of format you want, like live stream reviewing blogs, live stream um, commenting on other people's websites, stuff like that. You know, just uh, regarding stream, you can pick sites and react on their implementation. Uh, yeah, th this is also one of the topics which I'm considering, but I'll, I'll try to find, you know, sites. Um, you guys can also send me the site. I can have a quick <laughs> look at their site as well. Because, you know, like, I don't know where to really start. So if you can give me some starting point, that also can help a lot as well. I just find it, you know, um, better interacting with all of you rather than, you know, recording all the videos and upload. Really, like, if you check on, on my channel, I think I have all the inf necessary information that you need for your SEO. So, you know, um, that's why I decided to do a live and it's also kind of fun as well. Like I like interacting with people, stuff like that. Why did you stop posting on Instagram? Uh, I just, <laughs> I just f started focusing more on Facebook. That's why. <laughs> and also Instagram, I don't see like the point, like I used to post a lot on various channels. But then when I, you know, when I start becoming more busy, then obviously, you know, uh, I, I stop. Then I only focus now on, you know, Facebook and and uh, Discord, like in, in your group, right? In, in our group, like not much. Like I try to be on as many places as I can, but um, yeah, Instagram is one of the places which I'm kind of neglecting, really. Maybe once in a while I might upload in the future, I'm not sure. Each time different category of sites. Yeah, I will I will try to find uh, something to look at and maybe help. Maybe, you know, do it some quick site reviews. Try to um, prepare basically. Hi from Chile. Hi there, Oscar. How are you doing, man? Uh, just to recap of what's going on, Oscar, uh, we are having a live Ask Me Anything uh, session and also a quick live audit as well. So you can drop in your website and I'll take a quick look at the website. Bye. Okay. So we have a first site audit here in the chat. Bioelectric.com. Okay, I'll I'll do a quick look on it. Your trusted. Okay. All right, so maybe the first area that I might want to improve is your phone number here. The color is maybe a little bit difficult to look at. You know, like you have to, when you design the site, obviously, you know, you're a web developer, right? Um, I know that, but also in SEO perspective, conversion is also important as well. 
and you know google always look at what people are doing on your website so that's important if your phone number is not clearly displayed obviously you know people are going to struggle trying to call and uh okay this is the home page and these are the internal links to inner pages that's good and you know all why choose us um you have used the proper heading structure that's great some of your work uh okay so maybe if i have a quick look on this is this any heading structure uh, heading tag so uh, maybe you know this this part you might want to use normal paragraph tag instead and you know make it big instead of using headings because i'm not sure it it would um it, it like it, it's a little bit you know different from the topic really i promise okay get in touch um good that you have a contact form here at the bottom and also a map and uh also good that you're linking out to all these uh to where you are the business has been featured so that's good so maybe have a quick look at the uh, uh service so your target keyword here is maybe electrician in the location okay so you have um written as this as a service page that's good maybe if i take a look at one of the service pages okay that's good um and this is also one one thing guys um you know like people always you know uh, some people advise you to really make something like slash service slash main uh, uh, electrical panel and um, this this is a tactic which you know uh, which came from like a silo structure stuff like that so i'm not sure how many of you have heard about silo seo silo structure stuff like that but really the the best way to put in your url is to put in in, in this way so you leave out the uh, the the sub sub directories right so slash service slash service um the main name of the service to put it directly something like this so this is the more optimum way from the from my testing and also some of the uh, seo um some of the people who tested this as well um except you know if you're having like multiple cities and you want to create like you know a different like mini website on a on one website then yes you can use that kind of site structure otherwise if you only have targeting one cities then this is the best way you want, want to structure your your url <clears throat> so this is something like um okay electrical panel re replacement okay and so this is i suppose this is your main service for the page electrical service panel service um maybe i'm not sure but this keyword and the and the keyword you want to rank for on the home page might be you know very similar to each other um you might want to test out first right uh, maybe some of these service you can you know talk about them briefly on the home page instead of you know um uh, creating them as a separate service pages or if you want still to have them as separate service pages like we discussed we you know you shouldn't optimize it for the location really so i'm not sure like you have to check on your company uh, check you know like over time obviously you you um you will become aware of it you know when start showing up on google search console stuff like that then you know that is there any you know competition between this main this page this page and the home page or not so we call it as keyword cannibalization for beginners um basically it is when you know one or more pages on your website trying to compete for the same keywords and you don't want that i mean sometimes they are good right when especially when you rank on the first page um having two of your website showing up on one on first page is obviously a good thing but in most cases it can hinder back your rankings right let's say if you're stuck on the second page and your website is showing like two results on the second page um that's not a good sign and so you have a use of interior electric um uh, maybe here i suppose this should be your h1 tag right so this the, um you should also include your um your main keyword here as well so i suppose this might be your main service uh keyword right so the city plus the name of the service 
So if you think that this can be a standalone CT plus service keyword that you can rank for, then obviously you want to include them here as well. And um, yeah, so I suppose that's that's it. Um, uh, let me check the about us page about. OK. OK, um, about us page. Um, Maybe on the Adopt About Us page, you know, you would want to kind of showcast um, the users, the awards, right? Like Better Business Bureau, if you show it right here, that's good. But also other things as well, right? On the About Us page um, to kind of show the visitors your, um, what do you say, your authority in the space, stuff like that. Um, let's see the Contact Us page. Okay. So yeah, and maybe quick look at the index. Okay, the index looks clean. Oh, you have something filtered out. Let me have a quick look at that. Okay, this seems like an old post. Um, Maybe you might want to clean this out as well. I mean, it's not important. We, uh, the index overall looks clean, but uh, you know, like since you already have many pages um, on the website, you don't really need to create blogs. I would, you know, advise to really like full streamline your effort to the, the service pages and uh, just focus your effort on that. Lastly, let me have a quick look at the speed. I, I think it seems like the speed is a little bit slow here. So want to check the speed here as well. Because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, speed is a huge um, ranking factor, actually, indirectly at least. Um, So just a quick look using GT metrics here. Uh, okay, so I think there is some room of improvement. Obviously, you can do to improve the speed. Um, you see, like uh, here, right? It takes like to total one of point six three seconds for all the uh, the the for the initial to load right so um maybe you can try to optimize more um um it's not bad really it's not bad um but you know if you can try to squeeze in more of the optimization that would be great as well you know since you're using elementor elementor is a little bit heavy right so um uh, maybe you know um reduce the the amount of uh, what one thing really is to reduce the um, use of um, these, what do you say, these shape dividers. Um, from I, from what what I've tested, after I remove all these shape dividers, the speed quickly went up like hugely. So you know, re removing some of these on the pages will definitely help improve the speed. Uh, does okay just a minute there are location pages linked in the photo location is slow low just started this client yeah uh, i know it's, it seems like a new site so don't worry uh, location let me check the location as well yeah yeah it, it looks good it looks good i mean overall the site looks good just a little bit of you know tweaking um check your on page a little bit more but i think overall it looks good um just um it looks good overall maybe if i check on the one of this location page let's see okay um the location page maybe i think it's a little bit thin um uh, maybe if you can try to add uh more content to e each of these location page i think that would be better and when you write the location page you know just link back to the home page right um basically you want to try to internal link 
every page up back to the main page you want to rank for. But you have to make sure that all the pages that you're linking back are relevant, right? Like very relevant. Let's say Elmont is, you know, is somewhere located near to the main city you want to rank for. Def definitely you can link back to the main home page. But I would advise you to, you know, beef up the content on the on the home page, um, on this service page really, and make it look a little bit more content rich. Hopefully that helped you uh, from a quick, you know, 30,000 foot view. <laughs> Let me answer other questions. How does Google check on UX design? Uh, I don't really know how they do that um, in details, but uh, they, they, they can, they can actually. One of the ways is they, they render the page. Um, so, you know, Google bot, right? Google bot. Um, what they do, I mean, from what John Mueller said, and also what I think it seems to be true here is Google rank pages after they render. So first they will, so first here how it works. First they crawl the page, they render the design, the UX, because they use the Google bot. The Google bot they use is the same version of Chrome, right? So they will be able to render the full page fully with the CSS and all the JavaScript. That's why you should never block your CSS. You should never block your JavaScript because it, they are needed for Googlebot to render those things in order to see you know, um, how it looks for the users. So if your page doesn't look, um, doesn't look like what it, it is to the users, then you have a problem there. So they render the page. After they render the page, they will do a little bit of process there to kind of figure out should they index your page or not. If your design looks good enough for users, they'll then they will you know process everything else in between, and then they will index your page. So how they they check on the UX? They use they use their Google Bot, which is which runs the same version as Chrome, um, the latest Chrome versions. So they will you know render all the CSS and JavaScript, all those. If you use Elementor and you want to improve on Core Web Vitals, use Nitro Pack. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's also a good one. The plugins um, to improve the page speed. But really, uh, what you can else we can do here is you can add the lazy loading as well. Lazy loading also helps improves a lot when it comes to page speed. I use them nowadays. Um, I, I didn't use them before, but nowadays I'm, I'm kind of like to use them because I also like using Elementor as well. Does a map help somehow for a local landing page? Uh, I have not really tested this in detail, but from what I've seen here is they don't really help. Uh, so I think you can really get rid of it. And obviously they slow down the page as well. But obviously if, if visitors need to know where you're located, then I think it's a good idea to have a map on the page. Their location pages, okay. Google has many parameters. Okay. So Mike, you let me know how was the audit I did for you. If you have any questions, you can let me know. I suppose that was a quick uh, overview. Overall, you, you did fine with that. Um, just a little bit of, you know, tweaking in, in between. But overall, the site look good, looks good. If dev updates removed, put back after some time with my same page every day will improve ranking. No, no. Google will ha will check the what was the previous version and what 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 has been changed. They will compare it. If it's not if it's not a major change, such as you know adding more keyword or uh, JavaScript stuff like that, then definitely nothing will change. They know obviously you know like people. <laughs> I, I know like some some of the beginners they they they'd like to do like this you know they they try to change small small stuff here and then they think you know that they can improve page no because they, Google has snapshot of what your your page was and then what it is now and they will compare the percentage of changes um, mostly if there's a change in the text like a a, a, par, a a section of a text then yes that could trigger something. Otherwise, it was just a change in uh, in 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 the uh, in the design. Let's say you know in the colors, in the font, stuff like that. Then really no. Uh, hi hi Saurav. <laughs> okay, guys, about uh, five more minutes. 
I'm here at the live stream, so you can let me know if you have any questions. Just five more minutes for today. And just to let all of you know, I will be running this live stream on every Wednesday at the same time. So you can expect to watch and to join around the same time here. Um, I'll try to do it every week. Um, but obviously, you know, sometimes if I if I get busy or something, then uh, I will not do it. But um, yeah, I'll try to do it every Wednesday around the same time here. 830 EST. 830 AM EST. WooCommerce versus Shopify, which is best for SEO. Uh I I I don't really use Shopify. Like I haven't really, you know, built any sites on Shopify. So I can't comment on that. Uh I've built uh but otherwise WooCommerce is really good. Like when you install WooCommerce, it comes with, you know, um, the product schema, all the important, you know, in, uh, schemas out of the box. And, you know, the way that they have kind of structured out their uh, their template are also very SEO friendly as well. I like WooCommerce. Um, it is very um, convenient, but I can't comment on Shopify. But I think you can pretty much do the same thing with Shopify as well. So it, it depends, you know, it depends on which platform you prefer um, personally, really. But I know many, you know, SEO who does SEO for Shopify and they're really su su successful with a platform as well. But maybe WooCommerce is easier. I, I'm not sure. Um, I, I have a student in my group who's uh, who's kind of struggling right now trying to do SEO for Shopify. Um uh, he he said that it's quite difficult to modify the code and stuff like that uh, compared to WooCommerce. So maybe, you know, it, it depends. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Roughly about uh, five more minutes and I'll be ending this stream. Actually, I'll give you 10 more minutes, really, because there was about 10 minutes, you know, um, problem with the technical side. So I was a little bit late. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll give you extra 10 minutes to ask me any questions because I was a little bit late today uh, due to the problem with the technical side. Seems like people have just started to join when I'm about to end. <laughs> now we have 10 concurrent viewers in the chat, I mean, in the live stream. So quickly ask your question, guys. I'll be here for another 10 minutes or so. But if there are many questions, I'll try to stress it out, stretch it out a little bit more <laughs> because I'm here to help all of you guys as much as I can, obviously. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Because I think, I mean, I really like this live stream, you know, it's quite, it's kind of fun interacting with people and stuff like that. How many clients can you take each month? Uh, for SEO, for SEO, I take not more than three per month because I work uh, alone, right? And I don't normally like outsourcing work, so I try to do as many things as I can. Obviously, I do outsource some of them, you know, like small stuff, um, but I try to do everything as I can, as much as I can. So for SEO, not more than three per month. For web design, uh, uh, not really, it depends, you know, some project is, uh, is big, some project is small. So, uh, but for SEO, obviously, I take, you know, similar kind of clients, right? like mostly locals. So they're mostly, you know, with like about five to 10 pages website. So that that's the limit. Uh, in the future, I might decide to scale. Uh, but right now, I'm I'm quite happy at, at where I am, 
and comfortable with where I am as well. Obviously, uh, okay. Do you prefer yours or rank map? I'm finding that rank map page titles do not remain as set. Google changes them. But on site using yours, this is not happening. Uh, I've never used rank math really. I mean, I, I, I tried installing them and once just to play around with, um, but, uh, but, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm a yours fan really, because I just find it easier to use. But when it comes to Google changing the page title, I think, uh, one of them is definitely, you know, like. Google will try to change the page title, try to match what people are looking for, right? So if your title is not relevant enough, um, they will change. And I know you you might referring to you know one of our sites that we're working right now, we're working with together right now. And I mean I've I've looked at the at the search results and it seems like you know sometimes they they switch the brand name on the front, sometimes they switch at the back. And when you, I looked at other competitors, they also seem to switch at the same time. So I think it depends on the preference of the search results, really. You know, like sometimes, uh, if you look at your competitors, many of them are also having brand name at the front along with you. And sometimes the brand name is at the back along with you as well for the, all the competitors. It really depends on the serves, I think, um, mostly. But obviously, first you try to make your titles relevant as possible. That will, you know, decrease the possibility of Google changing the titles. So, you know, if your competitors are using something like, you know, let's say roofing, your roofing, let's say a roofing website, a roofing and roofer, if most of your competitors are using both of this relevant of the, of, the, of the keywords, right? So one is the main keyword, one is the related keyword. You also try to use the same way to, you know, stuff in as many relevant keywords as you can to make it more relevant, basically. But I'm not sure, like, does it depend on, you know, on the platform, on the plugin, whether it's Rank Math or Yoast, Yoast, but I only use Yoast, really. How many hours time per month do you put for each client? Uh, that, that, that depends. Um, mostly, like, you know, for, for the lower, tier client like i have three packaging right three package uh, of pricing so for the for the lowest tier is about um to um maybe about 25 hours per month really about around that 24 25 um but but that depends you know like if, if they're on like you know more higher search volume keyword more competitive keyword then uh obviously more time will be put on that uh, I missed the live, had a little fever since morning. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I'll be here for another maybe five or ten minutes. So, Ankit, you can ask your questions if you have. Or, you know, uh, maybe in, like next next week, obviously, I'll come back again. Uh, I'll be doing it every month, Wednesday at the same time. So, you can always expect to see me on every Wednesday, except, you know, sometimes if I might be a little bit busy, then I'll inform you. Four of my posts are ranking at the 11 to 14. How do I push them into the top 10? Uh, that's a really like one of the biggest, quite <laughs> one of the biggest problems, um, you know, like I've, I personally also, you know, get stuck like this from time to time. And, some of the people whom I've worked with also get stuck like this. It really, man, I mean, the reason why you stuck uh, is maybe, you know, you're very close, um, but due to some reason, uh, one, one or maybe more than, you know, other factors, you might be missing that your competitors are better than you. So, you know, it, it could be backlinks, it could be, you know, content, it could be anything, right? It, it could be like, um, it is really hard to, 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 you know, to kind of, um, to kind of say what, what, what could be the reason, but, um, but, uh, one of the biggest push is really backlinks. So, um, that would be my first focus. If let's say you try putting lots of links and, you know, it's not, it doesn't work. 
and then you have to maybe look at on page you it's, it's really hard questions really to answer but, uh, but um yeah so the short answer is to maybe look at the links first i would say uh maybe the on page might be the first area you know because you don't want to maybe spend time on links right uh, spend money and time on links so look at the on page first otherwise check on the links if still not working then there might be other factors so it has to do full audit on that really uh maybe you know adding some internal links to that post also can help right like from the home page from you know the page where you're getting the links uh, do you code keys ax do you code i used to but now i don't because i used to create i used to build website you know from coding from scratch like that but then you know after after a while i realized that because i know i like i mentioned earlier i used to work as a freelancer so i find that you know uh there's a there there was a lot of competition right when it comes to freelancing so you gotta have to keep your price low while you know try to deliver you know the best work right uh so i switched to wordpress uh early on and i just you know fell in love with it after that um you know, due to you know uh, easy of uh, ease of implementation, and also later on, obviously for SEO purpose, and uh, and also you know at the end of the day, most of the people who came to me are just looking for simple business type websites. So coding is not really you know um, ideal really, because you know if they're look because obviously they can find a better pricing right uh, with same similar design using WordPress, but much lower cost. That's why I decided to switch to WordPress and I never looked back since. I used to code really. I find that linking out to Wikipedia other authority sites help. Uh yeah, I, I haven't really tested this out, but obviously, you know, it, it might help. But Wikipedia, I don't recommend really. Um I think one of the black hat SEOs which I know used to test it this back in 2017 and uh linking out to wikipedia page and the ranking tank <laughs> and and one of the reasons which he spec speculated was you know because all the black hat seos like to link out to wikipedia right when they build out pb and stuff like that in the past and that might be a huge footprint you know that google doesn't like i don't think linking to Wik wikipedia is a good idea but linking to other authoritative sites in in your niche or in your cities in your area um i think that helps i haven't tested that out in the real you know testing environment but uh i suppose it helps build out the eat of your website i mean there's really no harm of linking out uh really backlink from wikipedia is a waste of time <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, if you get links from Wikipedia, it's, it's one of the best links you can find, really. Although it might not give you a boost directly, but it really helps increase the chance of you getting that knowledge panel, right? That site on the, you know, when you Google any brand, you get that site panel, right? That knowledge panel. Wikipedia um, is found to um, to provide, to have like, let's say if your site is listed on Wikipedia, uh you have like 51 percent chance of getting that knowledge panel alone if you get a link from wikipedia yeah for yeah wasim said wikipedia backlink is very important for increasing traffic Obviously, I mean, I, I've seen a couple of websites who, which got, you know, backlinks from Wikipedia. And, you know, since Wikipedia, people, like millions of people visit it every month. So, you know, obviously people are going to uh, stumble on your post and they're going to click on your link. And a click on a link to a page is a huge boost for that backlink power. So, obviously, there, there's lots of, you know, direct and indirect uh, benefits of, you know, getting a backlink from Wikipedia, really. In a recent interview, John Mueller said number of backlinks doesn't matter at all. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, he he's right in a sense that, you know, number of backlinks 
are not is not important. But you have to see, you know, he didn't mention anywhere that number of quality backlinks is not important, right? He just said number of backlinks doesn't matter. So obviously, you know, you have to see how he speaks. Um, you have to kind of know a little bit, you know, how to decode John Mueller. Because really, first, he can't really say the truth, right? Because that's what, uh, obviously, he try, he has to protect his his job. But at the end of the day, number of backlinks doesn't matter. That's true. But number of quality links, uh, that really matters. You know, like, only like, you know, a few of good quality links will definitely help you better than, you know, 10 million you know, of low quality links. So you have to kind of interpret interpret that as well, what he actually means. But he, he's right, like, you know, in, in a general sense, number of links doesn't matter really. And uh, actually, just uh, maybe I, I think I have found this snippet. Um, let me maybe share. To the link here. Um, number of links. So this is the post. So I'll just link out and you can read the, the statement. What, got, what John Mueller said is really good, um, you know, um, so you can read it out. It, it looks, um, this is what, this is the kind of links that you should be getting. And, you know, the, when you build bad links, this is what you should keep in mind. So you can read the statement out. It, it's really helpful. How can we trust Google? Yeah, obviously, you know, you can't trust Google. Um, they're here to stop SEOs, right? They don't like SEOs, you know, obviously doing SEO <laughs> because they want people, you know, to pay for ads, not SEO. Who's your favorite SEO? I mean, people in the industry. Uh, that's, that's a great question. And I was planning to ask that earlier as well, but I forgot. Um, I don't really have anyone right now. I mean, uh, I used to follow many people. I, I started out, you know, following Neil Patel, like maybe, you know, most of every, everyone else. Um, then I switched, you know, then I jumped around like to Brian Dean and then, you know, to income school, all this. But really, at the end of the day, you know, I don't like really like anyone like. Um, but one person which I looked up to a bit and I kind of have you know, a little bit of respect for is Matt Diggity. I'm not sure if you have heard of his name. Um, you know, he he's 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 one of like one of the few which I really like, Matt Diggity. Um, so you can search uh, for his name if you don't know who is Matt Diggity is. Uh, he's one of my favorites. Other than that, I don't really follow anyone right now. I just listen to you know what people say in the group and stuff like that, and I try to test things out by myself and try different stuff. What about you all? Like, who are all who are, who are your favorite SEOs? Uh, let me know in the chat as well. I'm interested to know. Quality over quantity, but all things being equal, if two sites have the exact same links and content, but once I have several more authority, obviously the site with more links will rank. Yep, yep, definitely. You're 100% correct, Mike. But. Obviously, there are more to backlinks, really. Um, or, you know, if, if content, obviously, if it's one thing that is equal, backlinks equal. Another thing is brand uh, brand signals, right? Like, like what we just talked about last week, remember in our um, coaching call, brand is a, you know, brand, uh, brand signal is, is, is probably the most, most important ranking factor right now. More than links, really. Some guy named Tech Jackie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Neil Patel. Okay, that's good. Yeah, Neil, really Neil Patel. I don't really like him when it comes to SEO, but when it comes to brand building and, you know, digital marketing in general, I think he's, he's, he's one of the best really in the industry, or if not the best. 
But SEO specifically, um, I don't think so. But yeah, I mean, if that's your preference, then I won't comment on that. <clears throat> But yeah, like we were talking about, you know, the uh, the big uh, back all things being equal, right? Content and links. Um, the third is what people tend to forget and not really realize is brand signals. So, just one biggest takeaway from this chat here is start building a brand. Everyone, you know, get lots of you know positive brand signals, right? Like do all kinds of marketing to increase your brand signals and brand, you know, authority, and you'll see, you know. Your ranking skyrocket, you know, like crazy, really. If people start searching for your brand, interacting with your brand, brand stuff like that. And for bloggers out there, if you don't have a proper homepage, then get ready to get hit in the next core update. Really, I'm telling you right now, you should have a proper homepage and make represent yourself as a real brand, or at least make your site look real. You know, rather than having a blog role as being a homepage. And I don't know if you see any, you know, good websites ranking with having a blog roles as a homepage right now. If you still see in the future, they're not going to last longer. You know, make sure you make your site looks real, build proper branding, you know, all over the place. And you'll see a huge improvement in your rankings all over the place. <clears throat> okay, guys, and uh, that's all for the, for today's live stream. I hope you all are enjoying and uh, and you know um and maybe you know and I'll see you in the next um next uh, live streams. If you have any further questions, you can leave them in the comment section after this live stream is over. I'll come back to the YouTube to the videos and I'll answer them in the comment section. And uh, hopefully, every, all of you guys will join me in the next session. Um, next Wednesday. Okay, so um, have have a great day ahead and happy rankings. See you next Wednesday.